Hello, Steve here from FireboxStove.com. Welcome to the instructional video for the Folding Firebox Gen 2 Nano. Now here we have the TI Nano. This is our four ounce version of this stove. And you'll see it comes in this white cotton delivery bag. Now this isn't intended as a long-term storage case solution, but rather it works very well as a liner if you do choose to get one of the optional cases that are available. Now here is the, uh, this is how you found this video. And this is just the little uh, card that gives you the links to the instructional video and it does have some warnings on the back. I won't read all of those warnings, I'll just say that the Nano does not decrease or lessen any of the risks or hazards associated with the burning of any type of fuel. So the first thing I want you to notice are the nano sticks and how they are folded into the nano. One of the nano sticks is slightly longer than the other one and that is so that they can nest in here. Now they actually need to be placed on the far side so that this, the, this bend will go around this tab that is what prevents them from being able to fall out. So as long as this is folded up, these cannot fall out if they are placed in this correct position. So when I open this up, that moves this little tab, moves out of the way, and allows these to be removed. And I'm going to go ahead and open up the Nano. You can see the fire grate goes, just drops right down in. There's no real assembly necessary. You just open it up and it drops in. If you plate. have a smaller pot or pan, you want to aim them inwards and that will allow you to support a, you know, a very small cup or a very small pot. And then if you have something larger, you aim these outwards. This gives you a larger footprint, so it gives you more stability and it gives you a larger pot stand. So then you can use something as big as this great big 10 inch frying pan and have it be, still be very stable. If I just have a small pot like this, you know, I'll probably just build a little fire of chunks, you know, uh, chunks of wood that are just laying around. And I found that these chunks of wood, anywhere that people have been breaking up firewood, uh, generally these little chunks of wood are laying around because when you break a piece of a stick, generally a little smaller piece breaks off as well and they just don't get picked up by people building large fires. And so I'll just generally just build a little fire just with little chunks of wood that can be fed up through the top. You can see there's plenty of room to feed fuel in. Um, and that'll get a, you know, a quick boiling job done. Now if I have a bigger job to do, like if I have a lot of water to boil, or like uh, when I was cooking for my family of five, you may want to set it up as a Swedish fire torch. Now what I would recommend for doing that is I would kick up the fire grate and then you can either use four smaller sticks. So I've got four smaller sticks. You know these are still fairly big around. These are uh, you know I'm gonna say about one inch in diameter but you can use those and drop those right down in and what the, the length that those are cut to is actually um, from the bottom of the stove so the bottom of the feet here to the top of the burn chamber so you want this whole open area from this edge up to be open it needs that room to exhaust so once you have these set in here in this configuration then you'll probably need to use some type of an accelerant or fire starter to get these going. So what I'll generally do is I'll use a piece of the, the Firebox Easy Light fire starters and just break off a very small piece. But I'm sure that a cotton ball soaked in Vaseline uh, or any other kind of fire starter would work as well. And what I'll do is I'll just set a little piece up here on top, get it lit, and then drop it down in so that it goes down to the bottom 
where it can start burning and create that thermal column and it will start the, uh, the Swedish fire torch going. So that's one way you can do the Swedish fire torch is with the four separate approximately one inch in diameter sticks. Now the other way you can do it is by cutting a larger diameter stick and then splitting it into four pieces. And what I do in this situation is I take them and I, I turn them outwards so that the corner goes into the corners of the firebox nano. So I pick them up, rotate them, put them into position. And this, uh, this gives you probably a little bit more wood. So a little bit longer lasting than the four separate sticks. Um, but either way is very long lasting. And uh, you know, this is how I set it up when I, when I was cooking for my family. Well, the troops are restless, so I better get breakfast going. Baking, cooking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're all fake, I went out the wow, that's a lot of eggs. Go bring it to her. There you go. Load me up. Load you up. Pretty tasty, huh? Yeah, that's good. And I never had to add fuel through the whole process. So if you have, like, this is the 16 centimeter pot, if you have a lot of water to boil, you can just set this up and it will run for nearly an hour with one setup. And so you don't have to tend the fire at all, and you can really get a lot of work done. Eat your hot dog? I wouldn't get any cooler than that. Are you going to stir it? Yeah. <coughs> the second pot of water is boiling. So if you're doing a medium duration burn, or even a long duration burn, you can also um, side feed the nano. Let you get a better view of what's going on. Now I'm going to talk about uh, fueling it with an alcohol burner and the, the, the Firebox Nano was actually designed specifically to work with the Trangia burner. So these are little holes in all of the sides allow you to put these fire, or excuse me, nano sticks through kitty corner where you can slide in your Trangia alcohol burner. And you can see that that simmering just uh, you're able to put it in any of its positions uh, because it overlaps the sides here just a little bit and so it allows you to to work with it off of that edge. This is the stove placed at the highest position which is a one inch sweet spot. Okay so you can also put the Trangia in two other positions and one is just dropping it right down onto the floor and that will give you your hottest temperature. Well, this lowest position consistently gets the fastest boil time. You can also put your cap down in the bottom and then put your Trangia down in. This is the Trangia placed in the medium height position. And that's your medium um, temperature position. The other uses for those nano sticks is to support the optional fuel plate. So if you wanted to burn an Esbit tablet or something, you can drop that fuel plate down and that creates the right height for using an Esbit tablet. Here's an example of the flame while burning an Esbit tablet. Now there are other solid fuels out there and I would say any of the hexamine or trioxane solid tablets you'd want to use in this upper position. Um, there is this fuel which is the dragon gel and I have found that it really needs a little more space for the flame to develop. It burns a little bit more like wood. Um, so the more of it that's in there the bigger the flame is. And what I would recommend for that is just dropping this plate all the way down to the bottom so that you can squeeze a lot of this gel fuel down onto there and, uh, and get enough flame uh, developed under your pot.
to be able to do the work that you need done. So that can be in, put in the either position, all the way down on the bottom or up on the fire sticks in its upper position. You actually unscrew this burner head, actually just unthreads. So you unscrew the burner head and take it off and then just remove that aluminum plate and then replace the burner head. Okay, now that'll also have this tag on your valve side. And so once you've read your tag and you understand the instructions, you go ahead and cut that off so it's out of the way. Okay, so I have mine that I've been using for quite some time now. And once you have that aluminum plate gone, it makes it so you can wrap this cord right down in into here so you can wrap this fuel line really nice and tightly in there and it kind of holds it all in a nice little bundle like that so let me show you how that goes into the nano. Put the nano sticks in their same trangia position go through the, the higher hole position so the knob goes through first and then you just rotate it out once it slid through then you just slide your nano your trangia down in until it actually snaps into position then it's locked in and you can then you can hook up your gas bottle and you're cooking with gas it really puts out a lot of heat so if you want to you can really crank this up then to get it out you just squeeze these spring edges to release it from the nano sticks once again bring it up get the one prong through the hole first sorry this is, wants to move away out of the out of the frame here once you get the one prong through then you just rotate it and it goes through once you do that uh, once or twice it's really easy this is the side with the logo on it so this little e-shaped bracket you just flex in the small tab in the front and let it go on the inside of the firebox while you let these tabs go onto the outside and that locks it into its position there. So what I do is generally I'll just have these legs going outwards okay and then I have if I have a small pot I have these back legs going inwards to support the small pot and what the flame guard is for is for two reasons uh, one to protect the flame from the breeze and the other is to protect your pot handles from the flame so I just overlap the pot just a little bit on this side and this edge of the flame guard actually becomes your pot support okay so then you're supported here on the flame guard and then back here and back here on these other two arms of the pot support some other optional accessories are the cases that are available. So this is the double layer uh, Cordura case. And so this has actually two layers of this 500 weight material. Uh, so it is very durable, but yet it is still very lightweight. Um, and once again, as I had mentioned before, the, uh, the little, uh, delivery bag makes a really nice liner for whichever case uh, you choose to use you know even if you decide to just you know maybe craft one of your own or whatever you decide to do uh, these these delivery bags make a great liner now another case option that we do have is this uh, top grain leather case which is just very very nice um, and what I recommend if you're interested in the top grain leather case is to actually get another one of our accessories which is the carbon felt. Now that we sell this in three sizes, uh, 6 by 6, 6 by 12, and then this is the middle size which is 6 by 7 and a half. And the reason we sell it in this size is because it makes such a nice liner so in this case you wouldn't necessarily need to use the white cotton 
bag as a liner because uh, the carbon felt actually becomes a very nice liner for this case. So you can see it's just the right size that it wraps around and then you put your stove on the inside like that. And so when you're ready to use it, you just pull everything out and then you have your carbon felt which works great as a ground protector or you can even tip it upwards and use it as a little bit of a wind block. Um, you, know, you can use it as a pot grabber so you can so you can reach and pick up you know maybe a hot cup or a hot pot handle um, because it does have some insulative value to it um, but it is a uh, heat resistant pad and those are the carbon felts now another uh, accessory that people are using with the nano is actually something that was made for our larger stove which is this adjustable fire grate people are using that as a grill for the Nano and the way that that works best is with the Nano set up with its legs completely out so you have a nice big footprint and then you go ahead and put your what I do is I use a little piece of a fire starter or easy light fire starter or like I say you could use some a cotton ball with Vaseline drop it in first light it and then put in some charcoal this is just a lump charcoal natural charcoal but I go ahead and I put quite a bit of charcoal in I kind of fill it up because in this I have a little more charcoal here than what I would need but I go ahead and put in quite a bit of charcoal because um, I don't know I just I just like to, for there to be plenty of heat when I'm grilling uh, because I like a really nicely seared steak. There's a lot more heat coming out of the natural charcoal than what there is out of the uh, charcoal briquettes. Yeah, Phil's done. I think we could start eating that one and it'd be about right. Uh, but then you just set that adjustable fire grate on top and it makes for a really nice little grilling surface so you have a micro grill uh, that you can make out of your a folding firebox nano which is fun I thank you all for watching and if you have any questions about your nano and how to use it and how maybe you've seen me use it in some of the videos that I've done you know feel free to leave comments and I will answer your questions uh, as quickly as I can and I hope you all have a really great time using your folding firebox nano out in the woods with your family and friends I'm going to go ahead and just put this back together so I can show you how it, how it all fits. Once again, those go over to the far side edge. Then you just fold it up. Then your nano sticks are locked into place where they can't be lost. And you go ahead and put that away and put it in your cape, in your backpack, and you're ready to go. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.